we ask the question, who is Jesus? You'll be amazed at some of these answers. Let's take a look. What's your opinion of Messiah? One day he will come, save the whole world. And where did you get that from? From the Jewish Bible. And how will you know when he comes? Well, we don't know, we hope. Do you think there is a Jewish Messiah? You have to be, do believe in it. And uh, do you think he's come yet? We don't know. We believe that he's coming then, we don't know. But when he comes, how will you know it? Don't worry about that. Whenever he comes, he makes sure that you know. In your heart, what do you believe about Messiah? But we hope to come. We're waiting for that. That's and, our only hope. And what will, how will we know when he comes? I don't know exactly how. I mean, who, who is Jesus? Uh, I, I don't want to. I'm not going to comment on this. And as a Jew, who do you say Jesus is? I, I, I have no idea. You, you, I have no idea Christianity. No, no. I said, uh, as a Jew, he's Jewish, right? I, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not that sure as to who he really was, you know? Was he Jewish? Was he Jewish? Sure. Could it be that the Christians follow Jesus as the Messiah, and when the Jewish Messiah comes, it'll turn out to be the Jew, Jesus? I am aware that that's what the Christians believe, but we were not taught like that by our, our rabbis generation to generation. Could Jesus have been the Jewish Messiah? No, no that I don't believe. Do you have any reason for not believing that? Simple reason is I'm so firmly believe my own religion it tells me that it's not, so it's not. I don't ask questions. Do you believe in a Messiah? Sure. Do you believe that uh, uh, Jesus is the Jewish Messiah? It's questionable. Uh, do you believe he might be the Jewish Messiah? It's possible. If tonight Jesus came into your bedroom, and you see his nail-scarred uh, hands, and he says, I am the Messiah, what would you say? I would not, I would say, I would go see a psychiatrist. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. You, you know, it's kind of interesting, those answers, but there was an underlying theme, and the underlying theme was, uh, we Jews don't think for ourselves. We let the paid professionals think for us. Sharon Allen, uh, you came from a nice, from traditional Jewish background in that area, from New York. Yeah. So you, if I had held that microphone up to you back then, I don't know if you would have been, what would you have done? I, I, you know, through the years, I have met people who believed in Yeshua, and uh, they're not Jewish, and they would want to talk about their Messiah to me, and I would say, no, 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 I'm not interested, but I'm so glad that he came to your people and to give you a good code of ethics. So you would just brush them off. However, what happened to Sharon is she just had a thought. It was a God thought. I am going to prove to my husband, because he had said he believed in Jesus, uh, that it's just mythology, it's, it's just nothing a good Jewish person should believe in. And she started reading her Tanakh, her Jewish scriptures, and she read, and she read. Then she got the Jewish commentaries, then she talked to, to rabbis, and then she had the puzzle, the little pieces of the puzzle fit together. But as she researched and thought for herself, and that's the operative phrase, she thought for herself, she found something that is outrageous, hidden in the Jewish scriptures that I never heard an Orthodox rabbi comment on. You took the first ten names, a million, uh, mentioned in the Bible of yeah. the male names and looked up 
the roof meanings of their names uh, and, and explain what you found. Well, uh, by doing that, um, I found a message and um, what the message says, mankind turns their faces towards and are appointed mortal grievous sorrow to lament and to mourn. Then with the next set of names, it says God who is praised comes down to instruct and to consecrate. He is sent forth as a prophet priest to be smitten and scourged, to die, to give rest and security, a quiet attitude of peace. So, in other words, she took Gracious, Genesis, the fifth chapter, she took the first ten names in the order, looked up the root meaning, and got the whole... That sounds Christian to me. It, it did to me, too. Uh, but, of course, each step of the way, through my research, I still decided there's no way that I can believe in that man. I must have missed something. So then I would look further and continue to research. And that was what I had done for, for weeks, for months, uh, until I had the public debate with Rabbi Shachit. And then that was the turning point, because then I realized that the, uh, the Christian people who say the prophecies in the Hebrew Scriptures are speaking about the Jewish Messiah, I had to come to the reality that, yes, that is true. You, you know what, I've, I've studied your research, and it's wonderful, and there's something so, in, I know it was intriguing to you, but uh, in the English Bibles, they usually say the angel yes. of the Lord. Yes. But you found this particular person yes. just cr creeping up all over the yes. Jewish scriptures, and... Tell me some of your conclusions. Well, the interesting thing is when, uh, when I asked the rabbis about the Malach Hashem, uh, who is in the Hebrew Scriptures, um, the rabbis say, well, it's a different angel coming each time. But Malach is Aramaic for messenger. And each time the Malach Hashem... Now, in English, in the English Bibles, uh, Malach, they say angel, and Hashem is Hebrew for the name that we Jews do not pronounce, the ineffable name of God, the Tetragrammaton, the letters yud heh vav -He. We don't even pronounce the name. And so we say Hashem, which in Hebrew it's the name. So Malach Hashem, each time it appears in the English Bible, you're reading Angel of the Lord. But when you're reading it in Hebrew, you're reading that it is a messenger of the yud heh vav -He a very unique messenger that continues to appear throughout the Jewish scriptures. Each time he appears, the people who see... Could a messenger from God have people bow down and worship him? Don't go away. We're going to find out about, as Sharon said from the Hebrew, a very, very unique messenger from God that's all over the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures. Don't go away. Did you get that? Sharon Allen, raised in an Orthodox Jewish family in New York City, uh, literally her and her husband built a synagogue, Orthodox synagogue in Irvine, California. Uh, she's, studied, she's thinking for herself. She's taking the Jewish scriptures. She's finding amazing things. And all of a sudden, she's intrigued by what in the English Bible it says, the angel of the Lord, but in the Hebrew it says, uh, the messenger, and when you read in context, every time this very special messenger of the Lord shows up, some amazing things happen. Give me some examples.